Hey folks, in this interview, it's all about stock photography. Coming your way next. This is Twit. Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of This Week in Photo. I'm your host, Frederick Van Johnson. On This Week in Photo, we used to, about a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago, stock photography was all the rage and it still is, but things have shifted a little bit and we haven't talked about those changes much on the show. So the folks at Adobe are here to talk to us a little bit about what they're doing in the world of stock photography with their Adobe stock project, as well as some of the changes that have occurred in the industry. Brenda Mills is on the Adobe stock team, and she is here to tell us what the real deal is with stock photography. Brenda, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Hey. Good to be here. Yeah, it is good to have you. It is good to have you. So let, let's start off with a little bit about your background. So you're, like I said, you're at Adobe right now. You're, you're, you're an Indo Adobe employee on the Adobe Stock team. Tell us a little bit about how you got to that point and what sure. is the Adobe Stock team? Because that's a new thing, right? Yeah, it's a pretty new thing. Um, so I came to Adobe as a creative and a stock client. I... From the very first day, I started working as a photo editor, which has been my career my entire professional life. Um, I've worked with stock photography. Um, I started off by launching style.com, a website for Vogue and W way back in the day. I think that was in 2000. And then I've worked across digital and print, editorial and branded through up until I came to Adobe about a year and a half ago. So my work with stock was has been daily. And I know the ins and outs of stock as well as probably anyone going from a Bloomberg to a Time to recently Refinery29 as their executive director of photography. So many brands, many looks, many types of photography, all types of photography. Um, and I remember exactly where I was when I found out that Adobe had launched a stock collection. It was like this kind of aha moment. I was at Refinery29 and a friend was like, oh, maybe we should try Adobe stock. And I said, what? Adobe has stock? And it was just like, like seeing rainbows. I was like, that's brilliant. That's the most brilliant thing I've ever heard of. Right. They're incredible, incredible creative resource. And now they have visual content. And how did I know? I didn't know, obviously that I think within maybe a year, a year and a half, I would be here working with clients and helping strategically build out the stock collection. So it really felt kind of like kismet, to be honest, that cool. like so many creatives, I had such a long standing relationship working on creative projects through the Adobe Creative Cloud. And like so many creatives, it was so uh, such like the last puzzle piece of what the Creative Cloud needed so that you can work on these creative projects within the creative cloud and then pull in your video, your illustrations, your photos. So it really, it's just a happy place for me to be because I feel like I can work with clients and creatives as a former client and creative. Yeah, it seems like it seems like a natural evolution of, yeah. of Brenda from 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 where yeah. you were to where you are. And yeah, yeah I, I would imagine this is not the last sort of evolution. You're you're sort of midway yeah. on the you know evolution yeah. man scale there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's I think hindsight is twenty twenty, and that when you look back, it feels like a straight and narrow path. But you know, things organically evolve, and this is such a a great place for me to be and build Adobe scale so quickly and so creatively and so ambitiously. So it's, it's an exciting place to be and exciting place to build. And for me, I'm kind of a middle person between clients, Adobe and creatives. So for me, I just feel very lucky that it's such a kind of a 360, uh, 360 place where I can help lead creatives, but I also help lead clients. And we'll talk about that later when we talk about the visual trends program that I spearhead. Yeah, yeah, I definitely want to get into all that. Well, before we do that, let's sure. for, the, for the folks that are like, okay, stock, yeah, I've heard of it. And, you know, I'm a creative cloud client. And I know yeah. it's there, but I haven't touched I've even clicked on that palette yeah. yet. I don't you know, I'm afraid of it because are they going to charge yeah. me? You know, so demystify yeah. what that that is, you know, for the okay. for the average sure. everyday working photographer that may yeah. have an occasional need for stock. What does yeah. this what does this this program mean for those folks? Yeah, I mean, so stock photography is 
simple yet vast. Stock photography are, vi are visual assets that you can license for any project that you're working on where you need a visual. Maybe you need something very simple and quick and cheap. That would be micro stock. Mm -hmm. And that's what we call it Adobe, part of the core collection. It's workaday, vast quantities of imagery across all industries, very, very affordable. Um, maybe you work in video, that would be video. But maybe you are working on a really special project where you need top tier, best quality, imagery um, that's assignment quality photography. And that would be, like its name, at Adobe Stock Premium, part of the premium collection, the best available in the marketplace. So stock is just um, millions of assets at Adobe Stock that you can license immediately to use in your own project. It's what, at Adobe, which is very unique for stock, for stock agency, every single picture or video or illustration that we have or template is royalty free. So you see it and you can buy it and download it immediately. Yeah. And it, there's nothing scary or daunting about, like you said, oh gosh, what if you know I want it and I buy it? There are no mistakes. If you want to download it, it will tell you the price. It will say, are you sure you want to license this? You know, So there are no mistakes made. There's you no, know what no you're gotchas. getting. No, right, exactly. Yeah. And, that, exactly. and that's, that's, you know, and I would, yeah. I would encourage people, I've gone through the collection and there's just, yeah. It's uh, you're yeah. sitting on a mountain of just assets yeah. that photographers and any other creative obviously can yeah. can can put in and easily drag and drop into their work. And it seems like it, like you said in the beginning, it seems like it was one of those. Of course, you know this is what should be happening when you see yeah. Adobe yeah. incorporating stock into the app, so you don't have to go out yeah. to another site and figure all that out, get the asset, yeah. bring it in. Is, is it the right thing? No, go back and round trip. Um, but you you talked a little bit about quality. Right. Mm -hmm. So and I wanted to, to hit on that a little bit because there's the, the word quality is, is subjective. So sure. in quality, point. you know, there's got to be some sort of weird formula that's quality <laughs> based on your budget equals what you can. Right. Get, right? So right. so how do how do you, you know, at Adobe determine sure. what's premium and what's not? And, you know, how do I draw that line between here's a picture of someone running down the beach in the Bahamas, you know, and but this picture of someone running down the beach is, is a higher quality. What what draws that sure. line? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a great question. And you're right. Um, quality like beauty is in the eye of the beholder yeah. and also based on your company, your visual brand, the nature of the specific project you're working on. Um, but what I would say is that every person working on their creative project, whether they work for themselves or a small team or an enterprise company, they know the nature of their brand and the nature of the visual message that they're creating. Yeah. So core or micro stock, you know, has millions of assets available and you can search that. But whereas premium, the top tier assignment quality photography collection at Adobe Stock is literally curated. So that's a big differentiator. Um, the photographers that contribute to the quickly growing premium collection are invited by Adobe to contribute. And then every single one of the images that they offer Adobe, that they send to Adobe, mm -hmm. Adobe Stock, is curated by one of our curators on a team so that once again, we're streamlining your workflow so that let's say somebody like a Stocksy. Stocksy is a, a unique contributor. In other words, they don't work with any other stock agency. So Stocksy, this huge, amazing, really contemporary, cool agency sends us maybe 15,000 images. Our curators look at every single one of those images and choose which how many of those images are accepted or rejected according to very clear premium standards so that what we do is we cut down on search time for all of our clients. Yeah. It's only the best of the best and everything is curated. So that's a big differentiator um, from core or micro stock. Yeah. So it's all we approach each part of our collection very differently for a different offering for different types of budgets and project needs. Yeah, yeah, so you're, you're and that's great. So the, the curation step in there is, I think it's critical, especially if you're working yeah. on a, depending on the level of the project, even if you're working on a project for yourself, you don't yeah. wanna have to go through and, and 
and curate yourself. If someone is already yeah. with, yeah. with different eyes has done it for you, it's just it's kind of an extension yeah. of your team. Yeah. So let, before we dive into the Adobe Trends project that mm -hmm. you're spearheading, I wanted to talk about the, or the Adobe Stock Trends project that you're spearheading. I want to talk a little bit about the, and demystify the, mm -hmm. the, the the cloud around free stock versus sure. paid stock. Uh, yeah. because there's a ton of sites popping up right that right. i could just go to right now and find a picture of whatever i may not yeah. find exactly what i'm looking for but it's gonna it might yeah. be okay right. you know so yeah, what about that you know what what about yeah. those and oh, how does adobe I'm, fall I'm on that really glad you brought that up because you're right uh there are a lot more off free offerings free stock offerings and while a lot of them are literally quite attractive one of the things that i'm very concerned about um is the fact that there are a lot of unwitting creatives who don't realize that they're using these free assets at their own risk meaning that many, and you don't know which or how many, many of these assets don't have model releases to use for commercial purposes or even location releases. So that a vast majority of these offerings could be, you don't know which, um, not legal to use for commercial purposes. A model or a location may recognize their own visage or their own location and say, hey, I never, I never signed anything saying it was okay to use on your billboard or your banner ad or your even your brochure. Yeah. So that um, my concern is, and I know there is a, I feel like there's a tipping point coming here where, you know, um, a person or a group or a, a, or a location, a property will see a commercial use of, of their own property and say, hey, you, not only do you have to take that down or retract it, but they'll sue. Yeah. And so there's a word called indemnification that so many people don't know. And what indemnification is, is something that once again, Adobe Stock offers, which is that any image you use is going to be cleared by you know our curators and our legal department for both model releases and, and property releases. And we indemnify our clients and customers saying, you know, if you ever get pushback from a model or a location, we'll indemnify, we have huge indemnification coverage so that people know that using every asset at Adobe Stock is safe, is legally safe, and they're protected. And so there are all these people who are super excited clearly for great reason to use free stock imagery, but there's no legal protection if there's a legal problem there. Yeah, and that, that's that's yeah. huge, right? Because it, oh, yeah, that's you really know, it, it's, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? And there's, right. yeah, no right. such thing as free stock, I guess, right? So it's free up front, but what about on the back end? What about if you're a small business then starts to really gain momentum and become successful? It's once you get a little bit of success or a little bit of publicity, that's the irony. What if what if that campaign using that that project using that free asset becomes popular? That's when somebody is going to go for you if they realize that there's no release, there's no legality there. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that whole, that's, the, that's yeah. that whole that's uh, that whole the whole patent troll thing where they kind of wait on the yeah. sidelines for a company right. to become successful and they see that yeah. they're using their patents uh, and then you know oh that company yeah. just went public and now it's a payday for the patent yeah. troll. Yeah, yeah, it's really yeah. scary. And again, it's that I always say the word indemnification doesn't sound sexy until you need it. You know, it's a very very important very under um, acknowledged ne necessary aspect of using stock photography is make sure you're indemnified against any potential legal pushback. Yeah. It's really important as any kind of company, small or large. Yeah, photographers, yeah. you can you can think of indemnification the same as inoculation, right? So you, <laughs> you take your flu shots, yeah. you know, so that your something bad doesn't out. happen is yeah. the same yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Exactly. Cover so, yourself. So, yeah. Brenda, tell me, tell me. You you mentioned earlier that you're you're the the point person for the Adobe yeah. Stock Trends project. So, tell me about that. What is, what is all yeah. that about? Well, sure. So, I have a very um, long winded title. My title at Adobe is the principal of Creative Services and Visual Trends. And to unpack that, what it means is that uh, the Creative Services part means that I have a very small creative services team that works with clients to curate on-brand assets for them when we're working with um, any type of client across industries. 
what curating on-brand assets for clients also means, and here comes the visual trends part of my title, is that I spearhead visual trends research and forecasting at Adobe and Adobe Stock. So when I work on visual trends research and forecasting, what I do is I partner with a huge global forecasting company, again, global in nature, that works across many industries that is doing tons of research on a daily basis with fashion, obviously, textile design, interior design, high, you know, high art, pop culture, digital downloads, all social platforms. So I work with them and I do research every day all year to find patterns, to recognize patterns that are emerging and then relate that those patterns specifically to visuals. So what we do is on a qualitative and quantitative basis, look for where interest is growing with a growing audience around very specific types of images, both aesthetics and topics. So we literally track um, where interest is scaling around very specific imagery. That's both moving and still imagery. And we offer these visual trend findings to both our contributors so they know kind of how strategically to be building their own style of work and what to be offering Adobe Stock. And we also offer those findings to clients. Because think about it, if you're working on a project as uh, maybe a campaign that's going to be released in a year and a half, you don't only want to know what people are interested in looking at right now. You want to have some kind of data and findings around what viewers are going to be interested in a year and a half, two years from now. Yeah. So it's it's really not just it's not just really exciting work, but it's really necessary information to be conveying both to the people who are making pictures and the people who are choosing them. That is brilliant. That, that is brilliant. Yeah. Because, I, you know, while you were talking, a light bulb went off in my head. I, had, <laughs> I did an interview several years yeah. ago with a with a, a stock someone that that made that made their entire income through stock you know and they were yeah. they were sort of telling you know the the twip audience how they were able to go from whatever amount they were making to over six figures you know mm -hmm. shooting stock and one of the tips that she gave was to stay on top of the zeitgeist of the world yeah. in your in the genres of the photography that you enjoy shooting in whether it be fashion you know what's yeah. coming up where are people yeah. wearing bell bottoms i need to shoot more pictures right. of bell bottoms is it political? I need to get right. more shots of X, Y, and Z because people may be looking for political images, et cetera, et cetera. That's right. That's so you're, right. you're doing that. So you're doing yeah. all that homework for yes. both purchasers and contributors yeah. so that they don't yeah. have to be scouring through magazines and, and yeah. looking at stuff in the future. And, and yeah. that's, that's, that's amazing. Right. It's a full-time job. And not only, it's, you know, so visual trends are something that I've been interested in since I was in grad school. And it's funny because my my background is in art history and I use that type of research, but I've just shifted the direction. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's kind of ironic, but also very connected that I used to study uh, what people were interested in the past and how that was created. Now I have shifted and I'm studying how trends are growing into the future, but it, it's very deeply related. But the thing to me that's particularly fascinating right now is that clearly we've always lived in a visual culture, at least my whole life, this has been a very visual culture, but now our visual culture is evolving faster than ever. I mean, me saying that is no surprise to anyone who's listening because of social media and the social platforms. So not only do we live in a visual culture, but because people are creating images and posting them 24 seven on a global scale, the visuals that people are interested, not only creating, but interested in are shifting more quickly than ever. Yeah. Um, so it's more important than ever to be aware of where interest is growing as you move into the future. Yeah, because especially outside of outside of your bubble, right? Because we we yeah. we're all guilty of living in our own echo chamber ecosystems and sure. not looking outside of it. 
yeah. we, we absolutely need someone to tell us, you know, yeah, no one, no one really needs another photo of, of X, Y, and Z. Maybe yeah. try shooting right. this. Yeah. So that said, how do, if a photographer's watching this or listening to this and they want to, you know, that's, that's gold. I, I, that's my problem. I don't know what to shoot. Yeah. Can they get access to yeah. your, to the, the Adobe stock trends data or oh, yeah. do they, how do, how does all that work? Yeah. How that works is, um, yes, they can. So we release we released our 2019 visual trend forecast in December of last year for 2019. And there is, um, I mean, I think you could just Google 2019 Adobe stock visual trends. Um, and so there's a forecast where we released all four of 2019's major visual trends. Wow. And um, that is just public domain. To the public. You don't have to be yeah. a, a, an Adobe yeah. shooter no. or with one of the agencies that supplies your footage. You just, you can. Yeah. No. Wow, that's yeah. great. That's great. Yeah. And then what I do personally, and then with a small group, is I, you know, clients make appointments with me to come work with them, either via webinar or in person. And then I, I work with them around their visual branding and their you know, their own style, their visual style, and I can help them make image choices around the projects they're working on so that, you know, in person, I can work with them to give them kind of, you know, more personalized choice making and more personalized kind of deep dive work with them based on the types of assets they use. But then for, for individual photographers or illustrators or designers, you know, whoever's a creative, Basically, the trends are specific, but they're mainstream. And that's something I always try to make sure people are aware of up front, which is that by the time something's a visual trend, it's mainstream. Mm -hmm. it's, it's reached that tipping point where it's a global, it's of global viewer interest. Yeah. And there are regional differences, and we talk about that, but that you can know that if you're looking at a visual trend, it is mainstream, it is no longer niche. Um, but the word trending doesn't just mean it's a flash in a pan. It means it's it's trending in interest. And as a creative, what you should do is look at the four trends for 2019 and see which of the trends is relevant to the work you're doing. If you you know your body of work, we're never we're never proposing that the visual trends forecast is one size fits all. That's not the point. The point is um, that of these four major trends. As a creative, you can see, oh, look, this one trend, creative democracy, is really aligned with the work that I've been doing across the years or maybe a new project I've been building. You see where your entry point is. It's really the point is to help you be true to your own work, but to know how to evolve it. Creatives often feel like they're working in a vacuum. How do I know what I'm doing will be relevant or is of any interest? And this is your entry point. Maybe, and it's it's also just don't just try to you know swallow a trend whole. Understand your own creative path and see maybe this palette works for me. I've been wondering about these colors. Oh my gosh, I see now that these colors are trending, and so I will choose those colors. Those do make sense, or maybe they don't. You know, so it's really about parsing out the elements of trends that resonate with the work that you're working on, the style that's true to your art or the project that you're you're developing. So it really is up to the creatives to see what resonates with their own work and really shows them, gives them tools of how to keep going and evolve and say, oh yes, that strategically that makes a lot of sense. That's super helpful. I see the data that's relevant to my own work and my own projects. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I, I can't mm -hmm. emphasize enough how helpful that sounds from a from yeah. a you know, from a creative and i have a I have a, a bit of a design background as well and the, yeah. this, the idea of being able to you know, have eyeballs on the world you know because yeah. you, you look yeah. at things you look at things like um you know to sort of zoom out you, you look at google and, and a couple of years ago they introduced their was a material design sort of yeah, design. Design. yeah that that whole design yeah. ethos and and mm -hmm. how do should i use that should i you know is that the way yeah. is that the way things are going and yeah. you know and how does that translate into my photography are we moving into more of a minimalist kind of design feel right. you know in and to right. your point you know 
if you're living in a bubble, you could still be designing with, you know, drop shadows and glossy bubbles like Apple <laughs> was doing right. you know, when they launched the iMac, you know, and that's yeah, all, that's all that skeuomorphic design right. ethos has gone away. And now we're with more, you know, very, yeah. very, very utilitarian type designs. And you wouldn't know if you were living in your bubble. Right. right. That's right. And it's also interesting, too. I mean, you can get you can get like an overview and you can get granular. Um, it's, it sometimes sounds when like from the outset that, oh, because, you know, we're all posting on social and sharing 24 seven that as if there's a global aesthetic, but we're still living in a creative world where there are regional preferences. And that's something I do very much work with individual clients on, you know, if you're an enterprise client, what you create maybe for Germany or Asia will, will be different than North America. Mm. So we do get more granular with clients. Um, but these trends do overall really show you, you know, if there is something that's nostalgic, like 2018 last year, we saw a trend we called history and memory where people were using a lot of art historical references and still do, you know, a, again, these trends don't just disappear. Yeah. So if there is something that's historical, you'll be aware through our trend report, you know, or, or if it's a, like you said, maximalism or minimalism, you'll be aware like yeah. which path to take and what will not only get viewers interest, get their eyeballs on your work, but retain their interest, which is every bit as, a, as important you know, you don't just want people to look at your work and then turn away. So we do talk about retaining interest, whether it's through video or one of the um, trends is called disruptive expression. It's this intensity that really keeps viewers' eyeballs on your work because they're really taking time to unpack what's going on. Yeah, yeah, that's that. I, Brenda, you and your team are going to be my secret weapon going forward. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to release this interview now because I can't let the world. <laughs> No, that's, no, that is no, that is that is fantastic. What we're, what we're trying to think of is, um, and this is why you know one of the many reasons this working at Adobe and at particularly Adobe Stock and Creative Cloud is so close to my heart is I am a creative. I'm also very strategic, and I have so much experience. You know, almost we're pushing twenty years behind me working for many brands, and that this, this visual trends program really helps every single type of brand, industry, and creative. You know, it's there's so much range within each trend that creatives really can hook into it and, and come away with tools that keep them relevant now and in the future. So it's not just contemporary awareness, but it's consistent awareness of how to attract and retain viewer interest. Okay. And, it, and it's exciting. You know, the Creative Cloud is all about helping creatives. And it makes sense that Adobe Stock is really kind of taking this thought leadership role to continue to help creatives do better work, you know? So, like, the, so the, the yeah. content that's in that's in the, the creative cloud in the stock, you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, that's accessible from within Photoshop, et cetera, yeah. the, exactly. all, the content that's in there is informed by your, your, you and your team's work, I'm assuming? Some of it, some of it, you know, I, I would never say, the entire stock collection is informed by it. Not at all. But what we're building, since Adobe stock is less than four years old, what we're building is a communication program where we do signal to contributors. We have a process where we signal to contributors, this, this is growing in appeal. This is growing in search. We see the search data internally where all these keywords relate to this trend for next year. So we do communicate regularly with our contributors about this is trending. Then the contributors are informed about what has marketplace appeal. They push that out to Adobe Stock. That helps our stock collection grow and scale strategically. And then clients can come here and find the type of assets that they know are trending so yeah it, it's a beautiful kind of 360 honestly yeah it's a nice little it's a nice little ecosystem yeah, yeah uh, it is so yeah I, i'm going to be respectful of your time we only have, I only have a couple questions left here um mm -hmm. one question in the the last question so you can brace yourself is if i'm a contributor and i want to make money how yeah. has the ecosystem cool. changed back yeah. from the i can make six figures and you know buy a house in the hills from my stock photography to yeah. now and is or is it the same but before yeah. that you mentioned you mentioned region you know the trends that are sort of broken down by region is is 
is that some is that data that I can get from Adobe Stock Trends? For example, you know, in in Cuba, I'm just picking you know sure, sure. areas sure, sure. out of the out of the air in Cuba. The zeitgeist mm -hmm. might be you know more primary colors and vibrant colors yeah. and that sort of thing. Um, whereas in Germany, a little more muted, a little more minimalist and that sort of thing. Do you guys break it down by region? If I'm a designer in that area, designing for a client in a particular yeah. area. That's a really good question. I, I wouldn't say that, that that's not part of the forecast. That's usually part of something that I do a lot of presentations, both in North America and Europe, um, around visual trends. And that's usually something I, I kind of engage in discussion with our, the audience at these presentations. The forecast we've built at this point to be very much global. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we do come away with specific trends that so in North America might be more popular than in Europe. And we get that data from our global team immediately. So for example, there are four visual trends for 2019, natural instincts, brand stand, creative democracy, and disruptive expression. Now we knew from the outset, talking to our global team and getting their feedback that natural instincts, which is a desire to see and look at pictures that reference natural elements and connect not only with nature, but connect with oneself mm -hmm. because of the role of technology in daily life. We found immediately that that's a huge, uh, hugely popular trend in North America, whereas brand stand, which is about building brand loyalty through taking a stance um, around social and environmental causes, mm -hmm. um, huge globally, huge. And whereas um, creative democracy was immediately embraced throughout EMEA and now is picking up speed and steam in North America. So it gets a little granular that way. Yeah. Um, we do make sure that all of the trends are global. So it's more in my speakership series and when I go to different audiences. So I do a lot of talks with different creatives and clients, but also big at big creative conferences. So we, can get, we open up that conversation around regionality more in those spaces love it love it okay mm -hmm. so so final final question here oh but no, go for question. It. i didn't answer we, you were talking about contributors yes and making you know what's the difference what's the shift in the landscape making what yeah. you said six figure Exactly. Uh, yeah. Photographers yeah. that are watching this and they're like, well, back in the day, I, I know that I could have made a, a full time income from stock, yeah. Yeah. Is, you know, but but the landscape has I don't even want to say shifted It's sort of done the transformer yeah. thing and went from a giant robot into a car. You know <laughs> what? What? Yeah. What does that landscape look like for photographers sure. in terms of making money on this? Well, I always like to talk about con context, too. So. The first part of the answer is why? Why did it change? Why is there such a shift? And the reason really is uh, because of the digital landscape we live in now, right? Mm -hmm. So while one of the visual trends is creative democracy, since we do live in a creative democracy where people are constantly creating work, creating visuals, and posting them, there now is so much work. There's so many visuals available that it has turned into some, it, it's turned into uh, a landscape where people can get more visuals more easily from many, many places, yeah. right? Yeah. So everybody's a creator now. And so that has made it trickier for photographers or illustrators to know how to become contributors and to make a living off of that. And so we do very much at Adobe Stock work with contributors on a regular basis saying there's a few things to do. One is that now it's more of a process, like a slow build to make a living out of stock. It has more to do with, um, with learning, A, what sells. So that's, you know, that's something, that's one of the reasons why we have visual trends. Um, really contributing a lot to see what sticks. So it is more of a learning curve now. Putting a lot on site, starting to see what sells, but also not just putting quantity on, but putting fresh content on continually because the more you put fresh content on, the more often your assets will show up in a search. Mm. So it's, it's this learning process of seeing what sells 
contributing more of that, but also contributing often. So what we're seeing is back in the day, it was more of people always go to this, this stock agency or that stock agency. Now it's learning as a contributor what is selling, knowing your visual trends, and making sure that you're constantly putting fresh content online because that's a huge thing that a lot of people will just, you know, put a whole bunch on and then wait for the income. But yeah. what we found is the more often that you're contributing, the better your sales are going to be. You're going to be higher in that search. So it's really about the fact that since there's so many assets available so often, you really have to kind of match that as a contributor now. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost yeah. like the, the 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 flow of social media to stay relevant. If you're one of those people yeah. that needs to stay relevant, you have yeah. to continually publish new stuff yeah. all the time. And it sounds yeah. like it's a similar kind of flow with stock yeah. where, you know, and, and overlay that with the work of, of the Adobe Stock Trends team, what's yeah. what's what's relevant right now what's yeah, new yeah yeah that is that yeah, is really and, cool. and, we have, and we talk a lot to our contributors who are the more most successful contributors mm -hmm. to make sure that their input is always we're always getting their input and then we're always putting that input out to our other contributors to make sure that we have the freshest up to date like tips for success to communicate out to our contributors that's part of our contributor success work yeah, yeah, that's what a fantastic team. So, so again, if I, if myself, there's two, there's two things to this. So, if a photographer that's watching this wants to get a, get access to the to the data that your team is generating, they can just mm -hmm. Google Adobe Stock Trends, or is there a specific location they? Can I mean, I'm thinking Adobe Stock Trends, but I can also. Um there's a specific link to our forecast. I don't know if you do a follow-up or you can include it in your edit, but oh, there's a link yeah. that I can provide that will show you. I have both a long, a long form forecast. It's like an article and it gives you a lot of cultural context. It has links to the galleries, but I also have a spark page that's a more succinct, much more visual kind of quick read. So I'll provide both to you. And it just depends on, you know, the creatives needs or desires, or if they have a, a few minutes to read an article, which is, the blog post that I wrote is really the most informative, and the Spark page is just a great visual overall reference. So I'll give you both, and, and I think that's a great start for people. That's perfect. Yeah, and you answered my other question as well, which was if, if I want to learn about and become the best that I can be when it comes to contributing yeah. or being a contributor, what are the best practices? And I'm assuming yeah. you're, you're going to yeah. you go over that in the blog post and in the, the spark page that you well, created. In the blog post, we don't really go over best practices, but again, we have a whole contributor success team and maybe, um, Jessica, we can make sure to give a link with some contributor tips Perfect. too. Perfect. Yeah. Good, good, good. Oh. Okay. We will do mm -hmm. that. Well, awesome, Brenda. So, what's next? You know, as we wrap this up, what's what's next for you? What's next for the team that you're leading? What's next yeah. for the world of stock? You know, give us give yeah. us the crystal ball look. Yeah. Well, I think that you know my big push for 2019, at least, I try to take it year by year. You know, my big push right now is really re getting much more information around regional priorities, and we touched on that briefly. But I do think that sometimes people are starting to think that, oh, it's, it's just a global community. And it, we really aren't at that point. People, I think quite happily, people really do have regional preferences, regional aesthetics, regional priorities. And we're really um, honing in on focusing on those regions around the world. Uh, you know, you think about how much people want authentic imagery, authentic assets. People want locally authentic portrayals. And so we're very, very committed to authenticity here. And that includes clearly diversity, but also authentically portraying places all over the world and then offering local, local content. So I think it's that localism. What Last year, 2018, we had multi-localism was a visual trend, and it's about conveying um, local authentic experience, but also focusing on the fact that so many of us um, care about and relate to and have knowledge of so many different places in the world because of digital technology. But with that comes a responsibility to understanding regional 
um, visuals. So that's really kind of what I'm honing in on this, this year is really pushing regional content that we're sure is locally sourced and is providing content for every area in the world. I love that. I love that. The, the work you get, and I, I, I don't say it flippantly, you, the work you're doing, I think is really, really important from a variety of perspectives, even for, for just a hobbyist that are looking for what, you know, what should I shoot next or what's popular or what will resonate in my area and all the way up through photographers that are leading workshops in different areas of the world. You know, you're leading a group of people. You should probably be aware of what the sort of visual zeitgeist is of that area so that you can, you can sort of shoot in those guidelines. I think it makes a whole lot of sense. Also, I think it kind of comes back to, you know, one really big mission at Adobe Stock and Adobe Creative Cloud, which is something I feel like we've kind of danced around in this talk um, very innocently, but it, it really makes me think that it comes down to the fact that Adobe Stock is truly dedicated to transforming what stock offers, what stock photography or video is, what a stock offering is. And Adobe, of all companies, can do this. We want to transform stock offerings. We want to offer diverse, authentic imagery um, for all creative needs. So that's why you're seeing um, such a range of projects, you know, offering visual trends to the public, you know, becoming regionally aware so that we really blow out and make stock the most relevant visual offering that it can ever be and that it ever has been. We're really trying to and are leading into the future and creating something new out of stock. I love it. I love it. Hopefully along with that, maybe we can get away from the name stock because yes. the oh, name stock word. sounds so sounds so in gray it. and generic. It's like a stock yeah, room right. with right. with stuff in it when this is so not that, right? So. Right. I love it. But maybe that's what's up next. You yeah, name. The next staff meeting, bring that up. Say Frederick Van Johnson said change. Awesome. I love it. Very cool. Brenda, thank you so much for coming on today. It's, it's been fantastic talking to you. Um, I'll put all the links that you send me in the description for this YouTube video, as well as in the blog post um, for this on thisweekinphoto.com so folks can click through and find Great. it. Any, any parting thoughts that you'd like to leave with the, the, the TWIP audience? Um, I am always eager to get feedback if there's any way. You know, again, we are very committed to transforming the stock offering and we're committed to offering tools of, you know, creative strategy, but how we do that is by being uh, responsive. And Adobe is so responsive and it really is this kind of feedback loop. You know, we offer something to creatives, but through creative input and feedback, we get better. So I, again, it's, I always talk about Adobe and Adobe stock being 360. So we need creatives feedback to offer you something better and better every day. Absolutely. Well, there you go. Well, I will invite you to the TWIP Pro community, which is a group yeah. of photographers that can give you all the feedback you want or a lot of it. Um, or a lot of it, yeah. yeah. well, not all of it, but a lot of it. Uh, so, yeah, look out for an invite for that. So we'll, we'll welcome you in there with open arms for, uh, you know, so that we can provide you with feedback. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Brenda, for coming on. It's been a fantastic conversation. I honestly did not think this, I knew this interview was going to be interesting, but I thought we were going to, you know, it was going to be more about just you know stock photography where things are I had no idea that you guys were providing such a valuable asset for oh, photographers cool. yeah, know, yeah and doing it for free you know, like it's yeah. not I, you know my knee jerk reaction would have been oh yeah you can get access to this data if you jump through these 15 hoops oh, and funny. subscribe yeah. and you do all this but you're yeah. making it for free so that is uh, that's that's fantastic thank you for doing yeah. that sure absolutely my pleasure good to talk to you thank yeah. you all right thanks a lot Brenda. we'll see you, see you next time This is Twitter.